Okay, thank you. Thank you, and welcome. Um, Lisa directed that question um, uh, whether uh, this pathway for EAP teachers is accessible to all. And uh, I think our presentation will be like a picture from the Turkish context, whether it is accessible or not. So welcome again. Uh, I am Mehmet Altay from Koji University of Turkey and my colleague. Uh, my name is Doğan Yüksel. Uh, we work in the same university and we are in the English language teaching department. So our students usually are uh, just uh, going to be English teachers, uh, teaching in different uh, uh, like uh, sections of the sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, like uh, we are particularly interested in like, uh, like how uh, the education in Turkey will be reflected uh, in terms of an uh, EAP. Uh, teaching uh, background and then like uh, credentials. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, EAP background uh, as teachers as well, mm -hmm. uh, before uh, starting teaching, training teachers. <clears throat> so, um... Um, first of all, let's start with uh, a very broad definition or uh, details about uh, EMI, uh, the consensus on the nature of EMI is it doesn't specifically teach uh, the language, uh, rather uh, it has a specific focus on training content knowledge. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, uh, its nature includes teaching content knowledge for non-native speakers of English. Mm -hmm. Here we might just say a little bit pause and then ask like, are we all familiar with EMI? Because we just jumped into it, but because uh, like uh, we are uh, also uh, looking for the intersection between EAP and EMI, but uh, do we need to explain it a little bit? No, okay, great. All right. Uh, and there are some further details regarding the Turkish context. For example, it's not one of those ex-colonized countries. Uh, still, it has a long, a well rooted history of EMI. We'll talk about this. But uh, here is a, another metaphor, in addition to Lindsay's metaphors, uh, concerning how EMI teachers perceive themselves. Here we have. We have to <laughs> teach Einstein's energy formula, probably. They yeah. witness such things. This is a tension we have, and uh, it's also reported in some other parts of the world, like we have studies from Spain, uh, from uh, Northern Europe. Like we have that tension between uh, EMI subject specialists and then uh, EEP or, or sometimes ESP instructors, and then like how they are positioning themselves in class. Mm -hmm. So this is just like, yeah. Plus, they also question or sometimes. Um, criticize uh, EAP teachers or general English uh, teachers for not teaching language that they require uh, in their fields. Um, therefore, still, uh, language proficiency is probably the most heavily research area uh, in EMI. Uh, and therefore, uh, ESP has a specific role and importance uh, for EMI uh, and for students, for the teachers, for the lecturers. Uh, and maybe the, this is one of the most important reasons for the emergence of ESP uh, together with the 1970s uh, Council of Europe uh, decisions uh, concerning or uh, uh, you know, uh, establishing the uh, basis for common European framework of reference. And uh, EAP as one of the two subfields of uh, ESP together with English for occupational purposes is a very essential uh, uh, a very essential means uh, for teaching EMI, uh, for teaching in, in another language than learners uh, native languages. And here are some of the perceptions, uh, some of the somewhat global perceptions towards the importance of EAP. Uh, first of all, um, as Gilles and uh, Ray uh, puts it, EAP, uh, is specifically dealing with uh, you know, academic language and the role of an EAP teacher, uh, EAP lecturer, especially at higher education level, is <laughs> to find out how, uh, how uh, oh, sorry, what the students need and what they, can, uh, what they have to do in their academic courses. Uh, on, on the other hand, Macaro uh, uh, claims that EAP does not concern itself with the teaching uh, of an academic subject, uh, rather, the prime of objective of teaching 
uh, academic is uh, essential point here. <clears throat> uh, also, Dearden uh, argues that uh, EAP is designed to provide students with the type of academic vocabulary, especially vocabulary at higher education level, and uh, usually the written uh, one, uh, also teaching uh, the discourse related to a specific field of interest or a specific content. And when the issue is the uh, training of vocabulary, uh, most of these words that students are exposed to are uh, from across the different uh, disciplines uh, and general, they generally entail different meanings uh, other than their general uh, use meanings, uh, their uh, dictionary meanings. Uh, when we talk about EAP in Turkey, uh, most of the time, the lecturers just assume that uh, there will be a list of uh, vocabulary that the students might need in their EMI programs in future. And then uh, the uh, lecturers uh, either assume that uh, it's their role just to transmit this uh, vocabulary list or uh, just also familiarize uh, their students with some academic discourse uh, that they might need uh, uh, in their uh, like further studies. So that uh, these are the two basic assumptions. And uh, one uh, further thing uh, we might have over there, they are not really concerned uh, in a, a sense that like uh, it might be uh, just uh, one of the main issues. So for them, it's usually just uh, providing support and then uh, just uh, being there when uh, the students would need and then just disappearing afterwards because uh, uh, most of the AP courses in Turkey would be in the first year of the academic programs and then students uh, would study three uh, uh, years further in their academic subjects. So uh, it is just like a secondary role uh, that function uh, we see, uh, probably unfortunately we should also say here, uh, in the AP program. And almost always uh, further years is without any language support. Yeah, that's it's not something sustainable. Um, so, our problem that we focus in the studies, uh, the quality concepts of uh, EAP and teaching uh, English for uh, English for academic purposes. Uh, again, uh, we refer to Dirta's suggestions for teaching EMI students. Generally speaking, the quality aspects, the quality provisions of e uh, EMI teachers. Um, she has another uh, you know, definition. She has different uh, quality provisions or similar uh, quality provisions that we have seen in previous uh, preliminary speech. Uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, teachers being linguistically qualified uh, or let's say linguistically proficient in, the, uh, in English language is uh, the first one. Uh, next, uh, clear EMI organizational and pedagogical guidelines is the key here. Uh, at this level, maybe macro and meso level uh, concerns might be questioned. And the third one is uh, teacher preparation uh, at uh, faculties of education. And finally, CPD comes, uh, in-service teacher support. <clears throat> um, specific to Turkey, we have a number of details now. Uh, first of all, teaching in another language than learners mother tongue all started in the 19th century, early 19th century in Turkey, that was French uh, because of the French dominance at that time, especially in such countries as us. Uh, English language uh, emerged to our country uh, in, again in the 19th century, but a bit later that French, uh, that's because of the American, uh, you know, yeah. uh, it's just a part of the American schools uh, establishing different parts of the world. And Turkey is a little bit strange. Uh, United States decided to open first American school in Turkey uh, in 1863. That marks like uh, a historical moment over there. Before that, uh, we had Ottoman Empire and it was mostly influenced by the Francophone uh, policies. Uh, uh, Turkish people, uh, academics would go to uh, France uh, uh, to get training. Uh, but then uh, I guess uh, the policy changed at the political level somehow. And then uh, the first uh, American school teaching in English in Turkey uh, started in 1863. And uh, quite interestingly, it still continues. And it's one of the top universities uh, in Turkey, Boazic University. The name changed uh, after a while. And it's a part of the, uh, the 
Turkish higher education uh, regulation right now is not really uh, closely affiliated uh, with the uh, American government. Uh, but then we can still see trace uh, the uh, impact. Even you know, the name of the buildings is still. still yeah, familiar. yeah. It's just like original. Uh, if you uh, came to Turkey or uh, if you are a little bit familiar with the Boğaziçi University, like we can still uh, feel the sands uh, over there. And then <coughs> that's also uh, one of the uh, main EMI universities, probably uh, the uh, biggest one uh, uh, in Turkey. Yeah. And since then, uh, the Council of uh, the Turkish Council of Higher Education changed uh, the regulations for teaching uh, <clears throat> teaching content knowledge in another language than students' mother tongue four times. Uh, surprisingly enough, uh, while we were on our way here for this conference, that uh, the fifth was given birth. Yeah, regulation. Uh, but so we didn't include it here. Yeah. Not surprisingly, still there is no uh, regulation concerning EAP, uh, despite this uh, well-established history. Uh, we don't still have a specific address for uh, ESP uh, or EAP. So uh, again, another metaphor, how EAP teachers perceive themselves. Just looking from the opposite direction and then like, uh, sometimes uh, I'm sometimes teaching EAP from year to year, uh, depending on the workload. And then uh, in the EAP courses, sometimes we translate or we just try to understand a specific uh, core subject uh, document. And then uh, when uh, we have a question like this, I mean, uh, of course, I'm not saying I'm not uh, uh, a subject specialist. I, I just say, oh, let's Google it together. <laughs> that can be uh, somehow milder because I, uh, in many times, I have no idea. I can have some guesses, but my guesses are all coming from a general perspective, so uh, they never work out. So I, uh, after a while, I just stopped and then I say, okay, let's Google it. And then uh, uh, that would be just uh, a way of tackling uh, the terminology, uh, the terminological problems uh, EAP teachers would have. So we believe this is just an exaggeration. <coughs> That's just a belief, maybe the reality in certain cases. So uh, the premise of EAP is that there is a correlation between language use and academic attainment. And uh, now that EAP lectures are required, not required uh, to validate their distinctive qualifications, uh, specifically for content teaching, how can they establish this correlation to address students' needs is our concern. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see some uh, excerpts from EAP teachers in our study. And our research, question, uh, research questions are threefold. Um, how the EAP instructors perceive, uh, on the one hand, EAP training they receive as teacher candidates. Also, how they perceive <clears throat> adequacy of available professional development of EAP, uh, in their, especially in their immediate environment. And finally, other, uh, factors. other factors determining the efficacy of EAP instructors, whether there are further things than just training and development. And this is a, a case study to our uh, university and um, again, uh, specific to Turkey, but we also believe and hear similar things from all around the world, especially for uh, where uh, EMI is in practice. And uh, this is a qualitative study. This is a, uh, our data came from uh, 18, uh, 18 EAP teachers. Um, we gathered data from EAP instructors uh, and uh, neither uh, national nor institutional re regulations require a specific prerequisite for these teachers, these EAP teachers uh, to teach in an EAP program. Uh, any general English language uh, instructor at universities can take the role and start teaching for EAP classes. And there is not a strict criteria. There are no strict strict criteria, or there are no well determined criteria to be able to teach. Mm -hmm. And you can teach. Like in the planning, like uh, while uh, the teachers are planning for the next semester, uh, some of the teachers are given into the intensive English programs, and then this is what we usually call general English. And then uh, we also have like 10, 20% of the teachers, lecturers uh, uh, assigned to EAP courses. 
but it is rather arbitrary. I mean, like, uh, okay, uh, sometimes they, are, they ask, would you like to try this? So uh, like without any uh, background, or you did it uh, in the past and then it was okay. We didn't see uh, too many complaints uh, uh, in the evaluations. Would you like to keep doing it? Or you tried it in the School of Medicine, but it wasn't working really well. Would you like to try it in the School of Engineering? Uh, maybe a, a different uh, major program uh, will be somehow uh, uh, more accessible for you. I mean, like, uh, like uh, no educational background, no certificate is so, uh, like uh, nothing uh, about the uh, experiences and training. Uh, but then uh, just arbitrarily uh, in the uh, meeting, uh, uh, the lectures are assigned uh, to EAP and non-EAP courses. And then uh, sometimes uh, some lectures volunteer, uh, but uh, if there are no volunteers, then uh, I call them victims. <laughs> so sometimes, just... sometimes it's like a gift, sometimes it's like a punishment, depending mm -hmm. on... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really depends where you will teach and then how you'll manage. Sometimes it brings certain freedoms, like hanging out at campus whenever you want, mm -hmm. no one... Yeah, going to the different you. cafeterias because yeah. some schools have better food for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's arbitrary. Just, yeah, it's just weird. And this is not a, you know, this is not specific for our university. This is the reality of all around the country. <coughs> and uh, you may wonder uh, the curriculum for English language teacher training program in Turkey. Here is our, uh, here are some of our, some of our uh, not some, sorry, uh, all of our major area courses except from the selective courses, select courses. In the first year, as you see, there is not a specific course for EAP, carbon copy for second year, third year and fourth year, there's not a specific course for ESP or EAP. To be an English teacher in Turkey, it doesn't matter where you will be teaching. It might be in a primary school or it might be at the university level. Uh, uh, you will need a degree. And then in the degree, uh, Turkish Higher Education Council has some course uh, specifications and then almost all universities in Turkey uh, are just following uh, the uh, list we have here. And then uh, in the first year, it's like uh, developing the basic English needs of the future teachers. And then in the second year, the theory, uh, acquisition linguistics uh, are just given. And then in the third and fourth years, like third year is a transition from theory to practice. And in the fourth year, it's mostly practice based. But then, as you might see, uh, this is a very generic uh, uh, program, and then it's not really having anything. It doesn't have uh, anything about EEP, ESP. But then uh, the teachers will be asked to teach in the EEP program just arbitrarily later on. Yeah. So uh, one of the arguments we would like to have would be adding something in here as an elective or as a module, uh, as a, a different track, uh, so that uh, at least uh, there might be something else uh, rather than just asking uh, people and then just like, would you like to have tea or coffee? And then would you like to teach in EAP or in the general English program? I mean, there should be some other uh, ways of doing it. And also uh, there are some somewhat overlapping classes within these years. For example, in second year, there's English language literature <coughs> two semesters. Uh, there is another class in a parallel manner, uh, teaching, uh, sorry, language and teaching literature. Uh, there is not very distinct qualities of these two classes in practice in classroom. It's like iPhone 13 to iPhone 14, very slight transitions. Even the users don't figure out what's the difference between these classes. At least in practice, these things start so, but when the issue is ESP or EAP, they are always, almost always given uh, as subheadings of the other classes if given, of course, it's another question. <clears throat> data sampling and uh, data collection, as I said before, this is a qualitative research and we collect data from 18 participants and uh, that was main sampling. And uh, our, we also have, uh, we had semi-structured interview protocols that we use to <coughs> analyze data. And uh, for the analysis, we used NVivo uh, software uh, to correlate the uh, co uh, commonalities of the responses uh, to obtain correlation coefficient. In our findings, uh, let's remember our first research question, if you like, uh, how the AP instructors perceive the AP training they received as teacher candidates was our first concentration. And we have two sub-themes regarding it. 
First one is uh, not having a specific course on EAP. And despite several regulations in the curriculum for teacher education in Turkey, all the participants agreed that they had, hadn't received a specific major area course uh, on EAP, regardless of their experience level, regardless of when they graduated from uh, their faculties, there is not a very important change. Um, like the third quotation <laughs> over there, the third excerpt, the first time I heard EAP was only when I was assigned to an EAP uh, course. I mean, that's like uh, uh, how uh, the uh, uh, teachers are learning uh, the field, unfortunately. Uh, that takes the whole picture. Uh, they are doing and learning things. Our second theme uh, is uh, EAP as a subdomain of miscellaneous courses. Some EAP educators who have more recently graduated from universities stated that they have more or less informed about EAP, just informed, not trained, uh, under various contents. Uh, for example, uh, current approach and methods in language teaching class. Uh, is believed to have uh, some uh, inclusions. It includes uh, certain qualities of EAP, or at least theoretically they are introduced with. Also, uh, world English classes. I can also count uh, task-based language teaching classes. They all uh, issue EAP, but as a part of the class. Uh, they study it as the third excerpt class, but only superficially. Our second research question focuses on professional development or teacher development issue. How do they perceive uh, teacher development on EAP? So this is how after they start teaching. I mean, it's not about the uh, teacher education program, but then uh, do we have uh, enough resources or uh, like conferences, uh, like professional development opportunities, mm -hmm. and then uh, are they accessible? That yeah. was the main uh, uh, question we had in mind. Yeah. How is the lifelong learning of teachers? And only uh, approximately 70% of the participants responded that they participated in a professional development event, but with a big what, uh, also with a big button question mark, uh, including online events and so on. Um, I will try to summarize what they say, if you like. The first uh, interview with Khan uh, argued that uh, he was uh, a language instructor and uh, he, uh, he was doing his MA degree and his uh, supervisor uh, was a part of an organization and they organized, a, uh, organized an ITAFL conference at their school, at their university. And he, uh, he has seen some presentations on EAP there and that was the first time he was exposed to the concept of EAP, rather con uh, coincidentally. And our second uh, interview, we met them, uh, argued that their prep school uh, organized uh, some, uh, delivered some workshops, but they almost always focused on teaching general English, not uh, EAP. And uh, for example, two ladies, teacher trainers came from London and they, uh, they, uh, they conducted a workshop on teaching English for general uh, purposes. And, uh, Mentem and the others were some uh, uh, a bunch of uh, EAP teachers, and they just wanted uh, they just uh, they just they just re uh, requested whether they can also address uh, to EAP in their teaching, and uh, that was a very you know spontaneous question. And uh, meanwhile, uh, these two ladies from uh, from uh, a college in London. Uh, put forward some ideas, which was not uh, something new for them, like, okay, uh, compiling the vocabulary required for the, uh, uh, needed for the, by the students and collecting some uh, relevant texts, contextual texts for students. So that was very, you know, mechanical things, which uh, any EAP teacher already knows. And <clears throat> our third uh, interviewee does not hold a post postgraduate degree, but he has a specific, uh, Mehmet has a specific uh, interest for uh, engineering, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the faculties where EMI is available and where EAP is so important. And uh, he also has a personal interest for meeting with colleagues around the world, 
Uh, however, uh, he argues that he wasn't supported by his institution, uh, both financially and also in terms of his motivation. He visited different countries together with, the, with a small community. Uh, in terms of professional development, he visited Spain, uh, Ireland, also Iceland. But uh, in these gatherings, they had dealt with EAP issues. However, uh, he was rather frustrated, especially in terms of the economical issues. Uh, he was not supported and he was not willing to maintain these uh, things uh, as a father as well, who was having difficulties. And our third research question uh, seeks for further factors determining the eff efficacy of EAP instructors. Um, our first theme uh, emerges as uh, experience gained in time. So uh, as you see, there are different uh, interviews with different levels of experience. And um, first of our interviewee uh, says that time is the best teacher. Time inevitably teaches us how and how not to teach rather than, rather than their uh, education background, uh, time is the best teacher for them. Um, our second uh, interviewee argues that in the first couple of years, she was like a fish out of water while teaching for EAP classes, she was not willing to go and teach. Uh, however, in time, she gained her own experience. And today, she even claims that uh, even if she were a substitute teacher for another friend who is not uh, available that day, she could easily, she could simply go and teach. Uh, and she relies on her uh, massive collection of resources after 19 years. And, uh, and finally, uh, AJ, our last interview for this question uh, stated that uh, she used to prepare lesson plans uh, before the class. She used to study as a teacher as well. Uh, however, nowadays, again, she relies on her experience and she no more organizes lesson plans and just goes and teaches. So we see that uh, the only support was coming from the previous experiences and then their trial and errors. I mean, like, uh, we don't see uh, too much uh, 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 professional support and then, uh, teachers uh, are mostly learning by doing and then mostly learning from their mistakes. If something works, they keep doing it. If it's not uh, really practical, then they adopt it or uh, they just uh, stop doing it. Uh, and then uh, in the interviews, we could see that like uh, uh, the ones with uh, somehow good experience would feel that yes, uh, I can call myself an EAP teacher now because I know what I'm doing at the moment. But then, uh, uh, like, uh, I don't really have anything else to support it other than saying it. Yeah. Like, I don't have a certificate. Uh, next year, I can just uh, be given to a different program and then I can go back to intensive English again. Like, there's no label. There is no uh, ID, uh, uh, like, uh, affiliation, like, and stuff, but then uh, they feel that at least when they are talking about themselves, yes, uh, I can easily teach EAP, I can call myself an EAP teacher, but then uh, it's just like what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's what I earned, nothing uh, given. It's like that. Also, refer back to the previous uh, presentation, there's another, we haven't reported, but there's a kind of resistance of EAP teachers for uh, further uh, development here as well. Uh, and our final theme, the second theme, uh, is personal interest in content knowledge. Uh, EAP teachers uh, are often those who have personal interest towards content knowledge. Uh, our uh, first uh, interview with Brock, uh, Brock uh, argues that he teaches EAP to engineering students, and he has a personal interest. He watches documentaries, typically. He uh, follows uh, different publications concerning his field, also watches videos. And that being the case, what I learned from these experiences, he says, contributes to my teaching. That's so important, I think, uh, being open for, uh, for innovations and field knowledge. In our final uh, interview, we uh, argued that uh, he had several relatives or family members who are engineers or field sp uh, specialists. And it was also his dream to be another engineer of the family. And he even uh, got education at a vocational high school. But in Turkey, vocational high schools are often regarded as those schools which are, you know, I mean, you don't plan for your future, just go and get the 
certificates and usually they don't go on with higher education as well and he had to change his career plans and he studied ELT program at an ELT program but he still did not lose his interest to uh, you know uh, arts and crafts <clears throat> and our uh, discussion in terms of training EAP teachers, uh, despite having a deep-seated and well-rooted EMI background in Turkey, uh, unfortunately, we still don't have uh, a curriculum uh, which specifically addresses or issues EAP, um, and um, it fails to address uh, the necessities in Spain. Also, uh, although English language teacher camps are subject to various assessment and evaluation procedures, to start uh, their profession or to be special, to get some specializations for specific purposes. Unfortunately, when the issue is EAP, there is no such a uh, planning uh, like the American practice tests. Um, it doesn't address to EAP, but it has specific uh, you know, qualifications like teaching for young learners and such other uh, subfields. Also, uh, at least candidates could be required to undertake any AP training course before starting teaching, just like Balib's uh, TEEP. However, we still uh, don't even have the simplest idea concerning such trainings. In terms of professional development, there's a crying need for the professional development of EAP instructors. Um, we can give some good examples from around the world. For example, in Italy, uh, the LEAP project uh, is a good one uh, that we believe. Um, there could be such, uh, uh, I think, uh, not a project, but there could, there should be a, a well-established, uh, you know, development program in this way. Not, a, not only a project, because projects are usually uh, casual things or, you know, specific for they certain schools. They finish at the point. I mean, yeah. if they don't become a part of the policy, then we might have a good sample, but then it will be just specific to a university or uh, to a collaboration group. And then we can benefit from it, but that would be all our personal choice. So we can also we can just ignore uh, what we see over there. So uh, we usually uh, think that we think that we believe that the policy based uh, yeah. developments and then regulations can be uh, better uh, opportunities for the development. Macro level things should be questioned, and these uh, professional development organizations should include. Uh, for example, lectures, seminar discussions, pair work, group work activities, or presentations, uh, as in the LEAP project. Also, in collaboration with content lecturers, uh, EAP teachers sh should gather and discuss uh, and also put some things into practice, like needs analysis. We haven't counted here, but also situation analysis, depending on one context to another. Syllabus design should be evaluated together with the specialists materials design, academic literacy across the curriculum, and such things should be more seriously issued. And um, we want to give an example. Uh, we want to re refer to Fenton Smith's uh, e uh, EMI study. Uh, they argued that Anglophone countries should, be, should support uh, EMI programs across the world uh, more seriously and should attentively uh, deal with them. Uh, I believe, we believe uh, EAP uh, is at the center of this uh, address. Uh, Anglophone countries should support non-native speakers of English and, and non-native uh, communities maybe uh, more than anything else, more than any other thing, because they really need uh, specific training for EAP. And other determinants, several studies have highlighted the role of academic experiences over students' success in EMI. Uh, the same seems to be uh, the same seems to be true for EAP instructors too. Uh, academic experience is at the center of uh, their, uh, their, uh, their uh, expertise. And personal interest reflects the personal relativity and uh, stable evaluative uh, orientation toward a certain object, whereas situational interest refers to transition, transitory emotional states uh, arrows in a specific situation or by futures of an activity. This is a reference, this is a citation from uh, a couple of friends. Uh, the same reference is true for EAP instructors, we believe, because a personal interest uh, underlies the success in EAP classes, as, at least in Turkey, this is the case. That was all, uh, and if you have questions, 
Comments? Comments? Questions? Thank you. Thank you.